Right guys, here's a video I'm, I would probably never make if it wasn't for this project and quite possibly the only video that is not even related to any of the content on my channel but is still somewhat informative. So we might as well make this video anyway just so I can pass my college course and then my tutor will be happy with me. So let's get to it. Now this video is talking more about YouTube, like how, you know, to be a decent youtuber on the internet and to top it all off how to follow the policies and that that's another thing we'll be talking about we'll also be talking about about like the algorithm this that and other so first we'll be talking about how to create a youtube channel which is rather simple but if you don't already have a google account you have to create one of those first so i'm going to show you how to do that right now so here we are at the Google account sign-in screen. If you don't have a Google account, ignore this box and press create account instead. And if these three options, it depends on what your use is. If you're an organisation or education environment, pick that. If you're, obviously, if you're a child, pick that. And if you're just using it for personal use or, you know, except that you're over 18, blah, 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 personal use. And we're just going to do personal use in this one. So, we're going to type in our full name, because Bob Jerrington is my full name, legally. Next. Date of birth, you'll need this. Uh, we'll, we'll just do that. That, 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 there we go, and with gender, this is optional, is male, female, rather not say, or customised, you know, it's 2024, so, you know, we'll, we'll just put male for now, because it's the most normal out of all of them, well, female as well, but, you know, whatever. Once you come onto this screen, you'll want to get, get a Gmail address instead. Now, you can do these, or you can just create your own. I'm just going to create my own, because that's what most people will do. Like so. Next. I honestly could not care if that email gets doxxed, because it's not like it's my personal email that I'll be using. Next, you'll want to create a very, very strong password. Like so. See, look how long that is. Now I just want to... Uh... Oh, for f***'s sake, I didn't think that one through, did I? There you go. So once you've entered your password and you're confident it's very secure password, go to next. All right then, Google. Please make sure you also enter special characters as well. This is what I mean. You need it to be very secure. Next. You can add a recovery email address if you want, but for me, I'm going to skip. Now, recovery email is where, say, you forgot your password or an anything like that. You can use this as two-factor authentication to try and get back into your account. We're going to skip this on this one, though. Now, you can review your account email and all that stuff. So, there you go. Now... You can choose to personalise your, your Google experience or you can just stick with the default settings, which I'm going to stick with default because, let's be real, who really sets this up? Now, obviously, if you want to read through this long, boring paragraph about personalised ads, YouTube history and web and app activity, stuff like basically telling you how Google uses your data and how you're, you know, getting spyware delivered straight to your computer at any given moment, accepts that. I'd like my data stolen, thank you. Now, all this will be on by default because they want, like I said, they want to steal your data unless you go through personalised settings, which I'm not going to do in this video. Confirm. And I agree. This new profile will be managed by your organisation. Oh, swear to God, College, have you done anything about this? This is my personal PC. Now, once you've finally created your email without all the trouble and hassle that I would have had if I wouldn't have been incredibly stupid, you'll want to go to create a channel. And then this is what you'll be set out with. Next, you want to select a profile picture, because let's be real, you, you, want, you want to actually have a decent viewing of your YouTube channel, like so. Now, everyone knows that most people would not just put their first and last name as their bloody YouTube channel. We want to spice it up a little bit. Your mother is led. I forgot, I have to keep this kid friendly. Cool. Now, get rid of all these things, because you don't need them. Of course it is. 
Once you're finally satisfied with how your channel looks, you'll want to press create channel. By creating your channel, you have you do accept the YouTube terms of service and the policies, which we'll get to next. Create there you go, now your channel's created. Now before you can upload anything on the channel, you have to be aware of the YouTube community guidelines. Now, we're going to get to this right now. Now YouTube community guidelines are basically rules you have to follow while being on the site. Basically expecting to get away with watching on the PC or something. Not, no, that is what community guidelines is for. It's to prevent stuff like that from happening. Now here's a very over-exaggerated example, which may or may not have happened in the past. Honestly, it's not what it seems. We're not changing oh, the yes. Ryan! What? Are you learning how to cook maths? No, I'm not. What? I'm not doing that. Fuck you, sending me your little shit. Wait, no, I didn't do it. Ah! Now, community guidelines is not just about deleting wrong things off YouTube. It's also about keeping people safe. First off, we'll talk about spam deceptive practices and scams. So, spamming is basically where you're either repeatedly commenting something or just spamming a whole bunch of random gibberish in comment sections, videos, etc. Either this... Or basically, you can just do this, and then just literally spam that 10,000 times. And it's pretty much the same thing. Deceptive practices is basically where, like, for example, a YouTube video has a link to a website, and it's basically asking for like, stuff like your personal information or your banking info. Like, stuff like that. That's deceptive practice right there. Which then also will lead to my third reason, scams. Which is basically where, you know, for example, someone's pretending to be something legitimate, and then they're asking for your bank info, and then, you know, they take it, steal it, probably give it to the black market, and then they're going to get all your money gone, this, that, and other, X, Y, Z. So what actually happens if you violate this policy? Now, YouTube's community guidelines is basically a free strike system. Free strikes, you're out. One, two, three strikes, you're out! But most instances, like for example, if you violate the guidelines once, whether, don't matter what policy it is really, now, it, first of all, you'll usually get a warning. And then if you violate that again, you'll get a strike, which means you can't upload YouTube videos, live stream, this, that, and other for about a week. And it go, the same goes with two strikes, except it's two weeks. And basically you're limited on stuff like you know like your community posts and stuff like that un until otherwise now your third strike is basically complete termination permanently of your youtube account and in most cases it's your entire google account that gets terminated as well so no stuff like your google and that will work properly or stuff like targeted ads i mean who cares about that anyway but now, if you get a warning or a strike, but your account's not terminated, for example, if you only got, like, one or two strikes or just a warning, they'll expire after 90 days if you take the policy training. Now, policy training is basically where you check the status of your YouTube studio and that, and then, basically, it'll show your violations there, and you can choose whether to just ignore the violation, take your violation, or you can take policy training, which will let your violation expire after 90 days. So, basically, it'll let you answer a set of questions, and you have to answer them correctly in order to qualify for that. Now, the good thing about that is you do have unlimited attempts, but... In fairness, though, it is 90 days. So even if you still violate that policy after you've take the, taken the training and it's still not expired, you will still get another strike for that. However, if your strike has expired, you probably will only just get another warning again. Now, it wasn't always like that. But back before they did the policy reinforcement thing, your warning would stay on your channel permanently. But now they have made it where you can make your warning expire, which is pretty good. Now, in fairness, I would talk about the other policies, but to be fair, this video has gone on long enough already, and I need, to, and I still need to go through other things. Because to be fair, a lot of these policies pretty much have the same 
sort of outcomes and situations with some being related to legal stuff but we'll not talk about that in this video for example like child pornography or exposure you know stuff like that that stuff can be a police matter so watch out for that for the people who are vulgar on the internet you won't get away with it round here next we're going to talk about the youtube algorithm and yso also known as youtube search optimization see one of, one of the better ways to describe the youtube algorithm is basically it takes videos that like you've seen before and then it's basically like you see recommended videos on the side, right? Now, basically, the YouTube algorithm recognises that you like that certain content and it'll show more of it towards you. Now, the next example kind of invo involves the algorithm and YSO at the same time because it really does depend. So basically, take this, right? You're loading a video, right? And you want to target a specific audience. For example, you want to make a video about, like, I don't know, say, Fortnite or something. Now... It's a bit of a hit and miss, because YSO, you have to make sure that people are looking for that specific content, and the people who do watch the content, obviously the algorithm will impress, it's basically measured as impressions, so the more impressions you get, the more the algorithm is actually showing to people in recommendation tabs and that. But if people are not really watching it, then it's not really going to show any further, and then that's when views are not really going to go up as much. Now, this is a problem, because the algorithm will not want to show your content if it doesn't appeal to viewers. You have to make sure the title's accurate, the video shows what it says in the title, and that it's not complicated titles, for example. Like, say, put, like, tags in the description or something like that. So, obviously, more people can find the content easier. And that's YouTube search optimization, for example. Now, the algorithm also works with channels as well. If, basically... The more views your videos get, the more your channel will get featured on pages and stuff like that. For example, on your home feed, you know, when you're searching up videos and that. Next, we're going to talk about monetization. Now, this is kind of important because a lot of YouTubers actually do this as their full-time job and actually earn money from it. So, this is actually what I'm going to talk about right now and the requirements specifically. In order to qualify for YouTube monetization, you have to have at least a thousand subscribers, four thousand public watch hours over the last 365 days, or 10 million public short views over the last 90 days. Now, monetization and the amount of money you actually get depends on subscriber count, views, etc. Stuff like that, really. It's not an actual fixed amount for each viewer who's qualified for it. For example, and that's just per 1,000 views. Now, this also varies on the algorithm as well, because if you upload an interesting video and people are actually watching it, it also depends as well, because if you upload longer videos, then your watch hours will go up quicker, especially if people watch through the entire video. Now, this is actually better in the long run, because the more watch hours you have, you know, the quicker you can get monetized, especially if you already have the amount of subscribers required. I forgot to mention this earlier, actually, but, like, we're going to go back to the community guidelines thing again. So, for example, if your video's gotten taken down or anything like that, and you haven't actually ne you haven't done anything wrong, and you can prove that, obviously, you can appeal this as well. For example, this video, this was removed, even though I literally did nothing wrong. Now, you can review this, but if they decline that, that request then it would say that you can't appeal it any further. Now, I didn't even review this because there was literally no point. But basically, you can begin your review, basically look at what us. So apparently I violated the scam deceptive and practices and scams policy, even though I haven't. I literally just showed how these sites are fake, be just so you don't fall for these scams. But hey, that's YouTube community guidelines for you. And what's funny is it would actually show a timestamp here, but it doesn't. So I think they know that I didn't actually do anything wrong. But anyway, let's, let's just assume that I did do something wrong here. And then you want to take action. So you can either take no action and just, you know, keep your punishment. And then, obviously, you can appeal the decision. Basically, they can take another look at your content. And if they still think you violated it, then they'll decline your appeal. If they, if they don't... I mean, if they don't decline it and actually accept your appeal, then they will either remove the strike or whatever, put your content back up, and remove your punishment from you. I'm so annoyed this video got removed. It did so damn well. 
Well, you know what to do, guys. Smash that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Maybe vote for Long and you win. Kid-friendly content. Kid-friendly content. I, for I forgot about that. Let's get back to the YouTube thing now, because we haven't really got that much left to talk about. So, this is your YouTube homepage, as you can tell. So, you've got your search bar here, you've got your microphone, just in case you want a voice search, just in case you're too lazy to type on your stained keyboard from all the sessions you've had. Kid friendly, why do I never keep that in mind? I am actually the worst YouTuber ever. Now, this is your create tab where you can upload videos or go live. This is your notifications where, say, for example, someone's commented on your videos or, you know, you've got a heart off someone for that you're in love with or something. Who knows? Now, this is your profile. Now, you can select to view your channel, view your Google account, start switch of accounts if you've got any alts laying around just in case your main account gets banned. Not like it matters because if you get banned, you can't even use any of your other accounts linked to your Google accounts. How about that one? You can sign out just in case you've had enough of YouTube and you just want to, like, forget about it even though it's literally everywhere you can go to youtube studio where you can you know go to more advanced settings about your content which we'll get to in a second actually purchase and membership stuff like youtube premium and that because you know you know I, all the rich people want youtube premium how about that basically you d this is your data in youtube this is how youtube manages your personal information now appearance is like light mode and dark mode so i'm actually gonna like d blind you right now That's better. Now, this is the language. Now, I'm actually going to change it to a language that, that anyone can literally speak. Wait, what the hell am I doing? That was so cringe. I swear to God, editor, do not put this in, please. You bet your sweet biffy I am. No, I don't want people to know I speak Japanese. Wait. <coughs> Now, restricted mode is basically what colleges do, because, obviously, they don't want you watching the good videos. I tried watching Bam Bam Tesla Cam in college, and they disabled all the good videos! Now, the location is pretty simple. You basically, this is basically just the country that you are currently in at this moment in time. I don't know why I did want to know that, but who knows? Keyboard shortcuts, again, another simple one. Basically, where you just, you know, stuff like you up, down, this, that, and other. Now, settings is where you can control various aspects of the website or app, depending on what kind of platform you're on at this moment. I'm on PC at the moment, so I can make this video. I would have done it on my phone, but honestly, I ain't got enough space for that. Now, this is where you can show your channel status and features. Certainly not, because I'm just reading that. But basically, that'll just take you to YouTube Studio and let you know what's actually eligible for you to claim. So, obviously, this is a new account, so this is just standard features at the moment. Now, obviously, intermediate features and this, that, and other, I am eligible for, but you have to have, you obviously have to verify your account for that. Obviously, me, I have all of them enabled because, obviously, I have verified my account, 2FA, stuff like that. Now, you can also create a new channel if you really want to. Now, if you have created any more channels, this will actually say add or manage your channels. Just like that. Now, there's also advanced settings where you can set user ID for, like, your channel URL and stuff like that. Now, also, you can set this as a default channel, so, like, basically, you know, signing into your account, per se, this will be just the default channel that you use. And then your brand account is basically, like, for example, if you've got, like, a company or something, and then delete channel is basically so simple. You just delete your channel. You can manage notifications of YouTube. Now... Honestly, if, if you, you don't need any of this on, really. Even though this is all quite useful, but a lot of it isn't. I mean, I do want people to know about commenting, just in case people are hating on me. Now, the basically, the viewing experience is quite simple as well. Basically, in-video info cards, which is basically what people sign on videos, basically, for example, to link to other videos or, like, merch stores and stuff like that. You can also show to use subtitles all the time if you really want to, but no one really needs that. You can also include auto-generated captions when available. Now, this is actually the video playback, and that which is usually set to automatic, because, to be fair, you preferably do need it on automatic, especially if one thing isn't available or the other. It'll just set to whatever's available and what will run best on your device. So now we're going to talk about YouTube Studio. So, when you first open YouTube Studio on PC, this is what you'll be greeted with. 
Now here you can see your subscriber count, your views, your watch hours, and then your top videos over the last 48 hours. I'll also show you some news and events that are going on in the YouTube community. So this is just your main dashboard, but if you go to content, obviously this will be where your videos are, where you see shorts, live, and then you can see your playlists, podcasts, promotions, etc. Now here is the analytics of your content, like your videos and such. Now unfortunately there's not a lot right I can show you on this account, so I'm going to switch to my main account quickly. So this is the analytics of my channel so far. Now I am experiencing hell. So like, this is basically, this is the peak of my views right now, obviously. Well, it isn't right now, this is 24th of April, but basically this is just, it's showing like a graph where like say it's peaked out and that's basically or is really, and then obviously then he's your lowest. Which obviously is not what you try to look out for. This is basically what it's shown in your feed and that. And this is similar to the view thing, because obviously if if you've got more views going in, then it'll show in your feed more and that. Because then that's just how the algorithm works. Now this is the amount of likes shown. Minus four, we love that. And then the amount of subscribers you get. Now this, this is funky. Now it just depends on many factors, there's all this stuff. Again, mainly due to the algorithm. Now this part is the comments, where's the way you can see comments that you haven't responded. <laughs> he did not mean that. Word of advice for sensitive people. Turn off the comments on your videos before you upload them, or else something said will probably scar you. They say the worst thing to look at on your content is the comments. I mean, not positive ones, of course, but you, you know what I mean. I mean, just say it. You, you know what I mean. But, like, this is the publish section. How did that not go through the health review? In fact, basically, that's another thing, actually. You can check comments that health review to see if there's anything that might think to be offensive, which there isn't, which is good. You can also see mentions here, which, obviously, people mentioning me, someone impersonating me, report this idiot, keeps mentioning me, unbelievable. Yeah, so basically, this is just where people mention you. You can also configure your subtitles for your videos and that, like custom subtitles and that, so say you can put your mother in there and it wouldn't even get monitored. Copyright, th this is pretty simple, so basically... Where someone copies your video, for example, without your permission or anything like that, or any of your assets, for example, like your logo and that, it it should come up here, and you'll be able to take action on that, whether you want to immediately take it down or give the creator a few days' notice to remove the video. And if not, then you can give him a copyright strike or a warning, depending on their violations. Now... Earn, we've already talked about this. Some creators actually do get lower requirements, like me. I'm at 500, three video uploads, 3,000 watch hours, and 3 million shorts views. But you can also see the old requirements down here. And then customization is basically stuff like adding a trailer, featured videos for returning subscribers, and that, you know, for the For You page. And then you can, uh, and then there's featured sections here where you can see like other channels, this, that, and other. So, yeah. I thought I'd go through the, the UI of YouTube just to make it, you know, more simpler for new new people who want to actually know how to create a YouTube channel and all that stuff and familiarise yourself with what everything does. Now, also for my college projects, I must test to make sure everything works and that whatever I've done. Hmm, let's see. It seems like this channel's working. Mm, I got a test of the video uploading function works. I think it only makes sense to put a cringe video on a cringe channel. Yes, call it that. Yeah. No, yeah, it's made for kids. Yeah, we've got to get into that nowadays. The copper laws. I put no, 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 I'm a real human, you oh. idiot. No. Um, let's just... Comedy, yeah, right, because my voice is so cringe. This is a 2019 video. Yeah, yeah, video elements, blah, blah, blah. Yep, it's working. It's worked. I hope you're happy. So, to all the teachers who are watching, I hope you're happy.
I swear, if any of the college students watch this, they're going to be like, I'm literally going to be the laughing stock of the entire classroom. I'm so cringe. I knew I shouldn't have done all this. I'm the worst person in the classroom. I'm so sorry I disappointed you guys. I'll try my best next time. Stop slamming your fat, sweaty head on my screen, bitch. Yeah, now you know how your parents felt when you was born. And I think I'm going to end the video there because it's getting late and I still need to edit this video. So, yeah, um, and then to top it all off, I've pretty much clarified a lot of the stuff on YouTube anyway. So, I was going to talk about the history of my channel, but I actually want to save that for another video because it's not really relevant in my college project. So, I hope you enjoyed this video anyway. Thanks for watching. Peace. And by the way, this channel is getting deleted, so enjoy it while it lasts. And that's the time I am finished editing this video. And I'm still not done yet, because I've still got to do my PowerPoint. Bloody 2.56.